Now to Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine. As Moscow continues to press its war of attrition along Ukraine's eastern border, ammunition is in constant demand. After Russia's full-scale invasion, Kiev's European allies stepped up production, but arms manufacturers are struggling to keep Ukraine's army supplied. Now, German arms company Rheinmetall is building a new factory, and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Danish Prime Minister Met Friedrichsen are lending their full support. The leaders of Germany and Denmark break ground on Rheinmetall's new 300 million euro plant in central Germany. Just days after Donald Trump said on the campaign trail that he would encourage Russia to attack NATO members who didn't pay their dues. Germany's chancellor used the moment and called on his European allies to prepare for times of war and address their armament shortage. Now new production capacity has to be added, not just because Ukraine needs to be able to defend itself, but also for her own long-term defense interests. A sustained, large capacity for the production of ammunition, for example, is important. The EU recently said it would fall short of its pledge to provide Ukraine with a million artillery shells by next month. Grindmatai says its new factory will churn out 200,000 a year when it opens in 2025. Germany has already pledged several hundred thousand rounds to Ukraine before then. Large-scale military aid from the United States is no longer a given. And with presidential elections later this year, the picture is even less clear. No matter what will happen in the U.S. in this year, uh, I think the conclusion has to be written already now that Europe uh, needs to be stronger uh, and we need to do, we need to be able to do more on our own. And I say that even though I'm a true believer in the transatlantic alliance. Defense experts call the new plant a step in the right direction, even if it comes a bit late. It's also another reminder that, like it or not, Europe has once again found itself in times of war. Well, with us now for some analysis is Gustav Gressel. He's with the European Council on Foreign Relations here in Berlin. Thanks for being with us. Gustav, as we just heard, this munitions plant isn't going to start production until next year. Isn't that too late to make a difference in Ukraine's efforts to repel the Russian invasion? In 2025, there still will be war. It will come late in the war, but it will come to the war, so no. Two years into the war, that's where we are now. Europe is still falling short in keeping Kiev supplied with weapons. Why do you think that is? That is because of the underestimation how long it takes to, to um, ramp up industry. Uh, ammunition, although compared to tanks, infantry fighting vehicles or air defense vehicles, is one of the most simple defense good. It takes six to nine months for an artillery shell still from order to production. Um, and uh, the European Union has started to discuss large-scale artillery supply in March last year, but they didn't uh, strike deals because they were fighting over the legal framework for this until September. Now, September 2023, uh, you can apply the six to nine month uh, time schedule on that, you can roughly guess when these artillery shells will come. Uh, and obviously that's too late for the promised uh, time of March this year. Uh, still, by the end of the year, Europeans will be quite in a good shape to supply Ukraine. Uh, but unfortunately, only by the end of the year, and the US election campaign is already foiling uh, American ammunition supply right now. And that's a huge problem for Ukraine. You've talked about uh, production capacity, but what about political will? Is there sufficient political will in Europe to help Ukraine in this situation? Political will starts to materialize, or I would say political realization doesn't start to, to materialize now. A lot of war would or had guessed that the war would end quickly in all long term. 22, they thought the Russians would win quickly. That hasn't materialized. Uh, starting from autumn of 2022, they thought Ukraine would win quickly. That hasn't materialized. Uh, last year, they thought that the counteroffensive would be successful and then there would be negotiations and there will be a ceasefire. 
that hasn't materialized. And now they start to realize that uh, a ceasefire will not happen this year because certainly Putin is betting on Donald Trump to deliver him something in 2025. Uh, so now, while there was a political will to help U uh, Ukraine there before, they started to realize that this is a long war and this is a long-term thing. Uh, unfortunately, they have wasted two years just looking at things. Is Europe, in your opinion, relying too heavily on the U.S. for its defense? Well, of course. Um, it was a cheap option for Europeans, but it was an increasingly sketchy option. I would say starting from Robert Gates calling in Brussels 2011 that Europeans should be more self-reliant. Europeans should have listened to the voices uh, that came from Washington. And these voices were not only the lunatics like Donald Trump. A lot of serious politicians in Washington told over and over again, look, if there is a major contingency in the Pacific and China is ramping up arms production, we will be tied down in the Pacific, we will not have the capability to assist you the way we did during the Cold War. And over and over again, Europeans did not listen to this very reasonable U.S. voices. And now uh, we are facing uh, the prospect of Donald Trump, who is uh, an even more unreasonable uh, American voice, but has roughly the same uh, thought uh, concerning uh, China as the prime threat, uh, plus his own populist agenda. And now, of course, within a very short amount of time, uh, people are asked to kind of uh, live up for the missed uh, things and for all the stuff we didn't do over the entire past decade. Gustav, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Gustav Gressel of the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thanks a lot.